Krishna. Haribo. So, by a show of hands, um, one hand means you're enjoying the conference, you're getting something out of it. Two hands up means you're ready to surrender and do some action. Okay, show of hands. Action, no action, inaction. Oh, this is an action group. Wonderful. Because that's what um, I'm going to try to inspire here, is that we, we look at what next steps we can take. Ajay Singhal and his wife, last year that I was here, they came forward and you heard from him today that he's committed and he's promised before Krishna and Mother Bhumi and both him and his wife and his family that they want to take action with their wealth, with their intelligence, with their words. <clears throat> this is a, a verse from the uh, Srimad Bhagavatam 10, 22, 35. Uh, it is the duty of every living being to perform welfare activities for the benefit of others with his life, wealth, intelligence, and words. Um, this is a lecture Prabhupada gave to a business community in Mumbai. <coughs> excuse me, Mumbai. Uh, excuse my accent. <laughs> um, in uh, Mumbai to um, some business leaders there. So here in Silicon Valley, this is a, uh, another show of hands. How many of you consider yourselves to be, especially if you're Gujarati uh, in South and other places of in, 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 in India, uh, consider yourself to be a uh, Vaishya, more or less, more than less? Uh, raise your hand. Mm, oh, okay. Brahman? Ah, oh, Kshatriya, I think they're the Sikhs out there, but they don't know it. <coughs> we need uh, Mahaprabhu to deal with them. <laughs> but, um, okay, so we have some, uh, it seems like a great show of Brahman is here and, and some Vaishya's mercantile community. Um, and um, here you have a less than Sudra talking to you, so bear with me. Um, I just have three slides that I want to get through uh, to cover this subject of cow culture. Uh, so, start by talking about Krishna and his devotees. Mm. Prabhupada, um, of course, uh, Maharaj Bhakti Raghavaswami mentioned in his talk how. Um, Krishna descends uh, to uh, protect his devotees and to, uh, and to do away with evil in the world. While he's doing that again, since he came as Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, this movement is predicted to reach every town and village. And the village means he's come to protect his devotees, the cows. And as Balabhadra just mentioned, there can't be in this verse of Bhagavatam also, Prabhupada mentions, there can't be Brahminical culture without cows. And um, sometimes I try to wrap my wrap mind around it as a, as a devotee, why our society is taking so long to have a sense of urgency about our parents, our universal mother, Surabi, and our universal father, Surabi, why are we at the edge of our seat at the, you know, like Balabhadra is saying, it's a war. They're being murdered. Imagine if somebody was going to murder your parents, especially in the Hindu community and in most any community, there's a great love of parents. We, we, we have such gratitude. If there's any children listening out there, what would you do without your parents? I've lost both my parents. Uh, already, and you know, I'm in my 60s now. Uh, but looking back at what I was taught by my parents, there's such gratitude is there. Why don't we have that gratitude and that sense of urgency to come forward and do something for, for our parents, Mother Surabi and Father Surabi? 
the, the bull is the breadwinner. He puts bread on the table by tilling the fields and produces grain. The mother, she gives us milk. She helps nourish us. She, she nurses us when we're sick. <coughs> I didn't learn this until I visited a Goshal in India in Tirupati uh, last summer that a cow, by <coughs> eating grass and herbs, is giving you medicine. And they do this in a very interesting way. You go up to them in the morning, you pet them, you massage them, you brush them. They pick up uh, your energy. In Hawaii, we call it mana, mana, your, your, um, your energy, your, your psycho, your, your physiology. They pick up your energy and they know intuitively what's good for your health, in particular, as you as an individual, just by smelling you, by, by that contact, that interaction. And uh, just like a mother has that instinct. Um, and so when it's time for them to graze in the forest, they'll start eating herbs that are just for you, for your health. Not to talk about natural medicine. And uh, they uh, will eat herbs that are even bitter to their taste. But for, for you to sacrifice their, their um, own sense gratification, uh, they're, they're eating things that are bitter taste for them, but they, they're good for you. So then at the end of the day, they come back after grazing and uh, you take their hot milk, maybe with a spoonful of ghee, and you have medicine that you need for your health. So the, the benefits are unlimited, we're hearing today, reminded of, of uh, how there are parents. So, um, Srila Prabhupada, when he came to the West, he was determined to bring Lord Chaitanya's mission and his guru's mission through the introduction of Vedic culture in so many ways, through bringing the name by introducing what was the first thing Prabhupada did when he came to America, he sat underneath a tree and chanted by himself. He didn't even have the, the means to bring a redanga uh, that first trip to, to America. He had a bongo drum, wasn't it a bongo drum? Yeah. So he sat underneath the tree by himself and he played the bongo drum for two, three, four hours by himself under that famous tree in Tompkins Square Park where there's a sign now, a placard, that was ordained by the city. This is where the Hare Krishna movement started. <clears throat> so that was the first thing he did. He brought Nama uh, from Goloka Vrindavan, uh, Harinam Sankirtan, uh, Goloka Premadan, Harinam Sankirtan. And then he uh, attracted the first few followers and then the first storefront was opened. And then uh, he, he started introducing some of the principles, mostly eat prasadam. <laughs> You've all come because of prasadam, he would tell us. And he would, he would cook personally for the devotees and make stacks of chapatis this big. It wasn't until I was here in Silicon Valley and I ate at one of the devotees' homes uh, and ate about 10 chapatis because they were so light and so wonderful and tasty. You know, instead of like a thicker chapati or something, like, I couldn't understand how he could, uh, one, person could eat so many, but you know, the devotees were young in those days. Um, so then the name, the, 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 the gradually Prabhupada started, if you look at, <laughs> the way I look at Prabhupada now in terms of, of uh, the Sankirtan movement and the four waves of the Sankirtan, he's like an importer that came from India, well all of, uh, that came from India but came further, he came from Goloka Vrindavan He's Krishna's emissary. He's the ambassador of the spiritual world. So he came with all of the gifts of, of the spiritual world and he's giving them out and he wants to uh, introduce the whole world to get a taste of the, the life that's in Goloka Vrindavan, the planet of the cows, the land of milk and honey. <laughs> you know, as Christians, there's a saying in the Bible, the land of milk and honey. Well, now I understand it. Uh, by understanding Vedic culture that it's a land where there's lots of cows and bees that hover over Krishna's lotus feet. 
so the land of milk and honey. Um, so uh, the name, the fame, the form, the pastimes uh, through the books, through the deity worship, the form has come. The Prabhupada installed so many deities around the world. So uh, the last thing that Prabhupada asked was to do was to establish Daivavarnashram and cow culture and um, reconnecting to our parents, the mother and father of society, the bull and the cow. And uh, that's bringing the whole village of Vrindavan into our world and fulfilling Lord Chaitanya's prophecy in every town and village. So, <clears throat> Prabhupada made predictions. Uh, video one? This is a, a video by a former, uh, by a disciple of Prabhupada, a former leader in ISKCON, um, Rameshwar Das. And he's speaking about a prediction. He was privy to have this conversation in a group of devotees. So it's a very verifiable information that was given to us. Play uh, video one. I remember another thing that Srila Prabhupada told me during that time that's very important. He talked about the coming of unemployment in the Kali Yuga. Oh, we're seeing this now. This is. This is um, 2009, almost 2010. This is a bad economic time. But Prabhupada was talking that as the Kali Yuga progresses, more and more there will be unemployment. And Prabhupada said, it, it, we must be ready to take these unemployed people into our movement on our farms. That's what Prabhupada said, that we need farm communities that can grow food. Because, and he predicted this, that one day millions of people will be coming to our Hare Krishna farms because they're unemployed. And we must accept them. We must feed them. We must let them live there and they will gradually become spiritualized. We'll put them to work, they will get their food, it will be prasadam, they will hear something about Krishna, and they will gradually, by the millions, become devotees. This is Prabhupada's prediction about Kali Yuga and unemployment and the Krishna conscious farm communities. Amazing prediction and vision. <laughs> So I would like to just, sorry to pause, uh, we have Raj Desai, like to thank him because he's living very urgently for some important work. So we just like to thank him because he is the owner of this uh, ICC, CEO. Please give a big hand. I just want to thank personally Mr. Raj Desai, we met maybe four or five times. He only suggested get cows here. <laughs> so he uh, accommodated everything, you know, whatever we ask for and, uh, you know, he's a great guy. And he loves cows and we want to give a special gift for him. Uh, this gift is, is a hand-churned ghee from Gujarat. And also we have some cow products for him. And please give him a big round of applause. <laughs> I'd like to introduce Raj. Sorry for this interruption, but uh, we're hosting uh, three or 300 of our major donors at our table tennis center, which is why I'm dressed this way. We have another building uh, just a mile down the road from here. Uh, table tennis is a big activity of ICC. We represent about 70% of the U.S. Olympic team. About a thousand kids are under training. And uh, so that's the other side of ICC. But thank you all for coming. Sorry for the interruption. I hope you've had a good day. And uh, all the best and blessings to you all. Thank you very much. Thank you, Raj.
quicker. Uh, I don't know which one to press. Change the slide. <laughs> I don't know how to use this. I don't know how to use this. So change the slide. I'll start talking anyway. Um, the next slide says, what is the best strategy to follow that will ensure Cal culture be established successfully in the US and North America. If we uh, are able to manifest a real model, an ideal model, that could be enough. An ideal model of a Vrindavan style village, not just a Goshala. Prabhupada's vision, the pure devotee's vision of creating Vrindavan village wasn't just to to create a, a sanctuary for a cow, that's a great, and the bull, that's a great start. Because like I say, we have to have a sense, we should have a sense of urgency, how to protect our parents, the parents of society, the parents that bring us all together as family. In Hawaii we say ohana, family. But he wanted that we create ideal models that engage the whole society to come together and share the land and the harvest and the happiness that, that is, that is uh, the basis of, of a bhakti yoga uh, cow culture. So how to achieve that? We need some, some strategy. We need a strategic plan that is, that is guided by the qualified sannyasis and swamis and brahmanas, the, the visionaries. And we need the administrators, the leaders, who can enact laws that can, that can uh, guide society, the arms of society, the head, the social body, the healthy body, the stomach. We need the producers. We need the vaishas and the mercantile community who do trade and produce the necessities of life. And we need the legs that move the rest of the social body, the artisans and craftsmen, the potters, that learn trade, maybe from their fathers and grandfathers, uh, the laborer class. So I, I want to introduce um, a devotee I just met. He's my host, Bala Mukunda Prabhu, Bala Mukunda Das, a disciple of uh, His Holiness Radhana Swami. Uh, we've been talking since I, since I arrived Friday night, and um, he's feeling inspired, you know, and, and I wanted him to say a few words because he's part of your community and I'm kind of an outsider, so. He, he has a, a few words to, to speak to, to you. Thank you, Prabhu. As we all know, in Silicon Valley, it's famous for what? Silicon Valley is famous for startup. It's a place where idea can grow to a billion dollar organization. It's a place where an idea can impact whole world. Today we can see the ideas from this area are impacting every town and village across the globe, every person. So. So, although we live in cities, with our ideas and innovation and with the spirit of Silicon Valley, we can contribute and we can do a lot for cows and villages. So, my only request is, any idea is a worth, so please come forward, share your ideas and let's collaborate so that we can do something truly for cows and villages and contribute to the society. Although we live in cities, we work on advanced technologies, but there is a lot of opportunity using the same technologies to help cows and villages. Thank you. So the last slide is um, a short presentation um, on the Hawaiian Vedic uh, eco-village uh, project that uh, we're working on in Hawaii on the main island of Oahu, not where the volcano's going off. <laughs> um, when Prabhupada visited Hawaii, he told the devotees, reaching the, the people of Hawaii and, and working uh, for the mission in Hawaii means farming. It's an indigenous culture that was totally ag-based 
next to anywhere in the world, probably Hawaii is one of the closest places that resembles Indian culture, Vedic culture. They didn't have uh, industry there. They, it was uh, pure virgin land. In fact, Prabhupada, when he visited there, he said, this, I, these islands are left over from the Satya Yuga. How many have been to Hawaii? Show of hands. Many? Yes. So heaven on earth. So to create a, a Vrindavan village there is very easy uh, if, if, um, if there's enough interest. We have about three or four families right now who have invested in some land, um, an acre uh, or so. The vision for this Hawaiian Eco Village is more like on 200 acres or so to really do it nicely. A um, little bit costly, the land is about 8 million, 8 million for about 123 acres. Um, but um, with, the, with the flow of tourism and the attraction to want to come there, we're, we're proposing some kind of land share. Our, originally called timeshare, I like the, the word time, land share better because you can own the land into perpetuity and pass it on to the next generation. Uh, you know, as a vacation rental kind of thing. So what we want to do there is a, a self-sufficient eco-village in harmony with cows and nature, um, offering them pasture, some private residential ownership, uh, land share, vacation investment, an Ayurvedic clinic and yoga retreat facility, and outreach community projects, which, which I've done with uh, nonprofits uh, in Hawaii, uh, and Balabhadra helped us write the curriculum for that. Um, so there's a great opportunity to, to have such a, a project. And a, a short video, you can play video too, thank you. This is some land that I saw recently, just to give you a little idea, I know, just to give you a little idea of um, the beauty that's there. This is 28 plus 219 acres on the North Shore of Hawaii, right across from the um, Turtle Bay Resort. That's the main highway going to the North Shore. There's some windmills here. The land is all of this. And if you just saw that hill there also, this is all pasture land with lots of wells available. So green. It's interesting that when, when the um, first cows were imported to Hawaii, the royalty, who were the rulers of the islands, they made a mandate that no cows could, should be killed. This is, this is again part of the natural uh, sentiment of the Hawaiian people. They see spirit in everything. They even worship uh, stones, healing stones, called pohaku. And um, it's, um, it's a very spiritual culture. So to introduce a Vedic eco-village there is a very, very natural for the islands. So I'll end here. Um, if anybody has any interaction, wants any further interaction, uh, questions, uh, just uh, see me, you know, personally. And then lastly, we have uh, a card here that we made uh, in terms of, of uh, taking action. Please, please read this. We hope that every one of you who feels even five, 10, 20, hopefully, more percentage wise inspired to do something will look at this and 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 um, fill it out and make a pledge it's called a pledge uh, a personal your personal my personal sacred vow to Sri Sarabi so please pick one of these up or you can distribute them now I think yeah, oh, okay we'll thank you online. very much Hare Krishna. thank you very much thank you very much Daiva Prabhu Hare Krishna Sorry, we are getting a little late in our agenda, so I am getting late.